In the previous video, we looked at creating a navigation link so that we could transition between our different views. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple more little things and also add in some little bit of logic that will build up to create your login. So first thing I'm going to do is inside of this navigation view is to wrap this in a VStack just so we can add a little bit more to our application. So I'm going to show you a couple of different ways. The first way that we're going to do it is to create a transition regardless. So if I click this button, it'll transition to my tab view controller. The second method that I'm going to show you is to disable it unless the conditions are met. And the third way that I'm going to show you is to only show it if the conditions are met. So I'll show you the difference between these two as we build up. The first thing I need to do is create some boxes, some text fields so that uh, we can actually see uh, some of the conditions that we're going to work with. So first thing I'm going to add is some text, a nice title so we know what we're doing, my login screen, make it a title, make it bold, set the color, uh, we'll keep it as uh, green, so it matches. Okay, and then I'm gonna add in a text field which you would have done previously in my other videos. So this one will be called username. And we're gonna create a state for this one called txt username. So it's gonna get the text from whatever the user enters here. Okay, so this doesn't exist yet, so let's create that and we'll also create one for the password box which we're going to make soon. So we'll set that to blank and we're gonna set one for the password as well. So we have two states which we can utilize here. Okay, let's style these boxes. So this is a text field style dot uh, rounded border set the font to nice and small so it doesn't look like it stands out as much. Add some padding. Add a frame to it. Add a corner radius. Okay, I'll get that to load. So we need a second one of these boxes. And this one will be my password. We've already created txt password state, which is up here. And then I'm just going to add in some space in between as well, okay, just so it jumps up. So we have these boxes and we have these which we can start to use for conditions. So currently this one will just process no matter if these conditions are met, but what we want to try and do is if the username and password is correct, then we transition. So let's copy our navigation link. I'll paste it down to this one. Now we have some properties on these navigation links which we can utilize. So that's the first one we're gonna do, is disabled. So this button is going to be disabled unless the username is equal to the username and the password is not equal to the password. Okay, so we, again, we haven't created these variables yet, so we need to define those as well. So let's create those. These will be constants. And let's let the password equal my surname capitalize. Okay, so we have a username and a password, so these errors should now suppress. So now we'll disable if it does not equal the username and the password. My next code has crashed, so I'll just try and build this project. Okay, so Currently that's option one. We know that that one transitioned. This one was option two. I haven't changed the label yet. So if I make this Daniel Bud, now my option two works. So it's only working if that's available. 
The third method that I'm going to show you is to only show the button if the conditions are met. So again, let's copy our navigation link. This is going to be option three. We've got too many options now, so let's actually change that label so we can see what they look like. Now for this one, we're going to use our conditional statement. So we can wrap this whole navigation link in an if statement. So if the username is equal to txt username and the password is equal to txt password, then show that button. Now this could be um, something where you show an alternative. So that way when I build this button, this text box will show enter the username and password unless I type the correct username and password. So it allows you to show optional views depending on what the user inputs, which is quite exciting. It's something we couldn't do easily with a new UI kit and it's quite unique to Swift UI. Uh, but hopefully now you have a lot of the information you can start to build up your own ap application, transition to different views and create some logic and functions behind the application.